this year, we tested 25 different energy drinks from Prime to Monster and Ghost to Gatorade, all in an effort to scientifically determine which brand was best. Link is right there at the top of the screen if you want to go watch our analysis and revel in Red Bull getting absolutely dunked on. But looking back, each and every one of our contestants was missing one magical ingredient. The ingredient of gamer. So today, we're rectifying that. We've gathered up another 16 drinks, this time all specifically targeted at gamers that promise to deliver us a boom headshot of energy. So which brand is gonna deliver us the most 360 no-scopes and which is gonna leave us as the cringiest noobs? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to separate the G-Fuels from the G-Fools. Let's get powered up. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, where I'm trading my long-term heart health for your late-night gaming binges. At this point, the video game industry rakes in hundreds of billions of dollars in cash a year. Hey guys, finished testing that game yet? We just finished level 3 and need to tighten up the graphics a little bit. I can't believe we got jobs doing this. And my mom said I would never get anywhere with these games. And so, of course, an entire culture has also blossomed around gaming to try to capitalize off of that sweet, sweet streamer life. Of course, you got your fancy RGB keyboards, your cat your headphones and your waifu gaming sleeves, but if you're gonna game right, you've also gotta fuel up right. Sure, there's always the classics like Mountain Dew and Doritos, but the market's evolved. The whole scene, which was at one point dominated by the likes of Red Bull and Monster, has grown to become much more sophisticated. G Fuel is jam-packed with vitamins, antioxidants, and plant-based ingredients. Is that a tank? The trash! It's the guy! It sucks! Playing the Done. Looks like he's really taking this seriously. Uh oh. This is Evo Grand Finals uh -oh. for real. Huh? <laughs> like I said, sophisticated. But in all seriousness, as more money and attention's been brought to the scene, especially with the huge surge in popularity around professional esports, there's also been a rise in companies looking to make a name for themselves as the go-to beverage brand for gamers. Sometimes that push produces something good, and sometimes it produces something like this Coca-Cola commercial. I love that Coke went and released whatever this thing is, and yet they still won't sponsor me. Anyway, in the energy drink space, many brands are trying to take a more scientific approach to fueling gamers. Brands claiming to give you exactly what your body needs to keep button mashing all through the night. These drink solutions come in all kinds of forms. Drinks, powders, even inhalers. And they come packaged with all sorts of embarrassing names like anime girl thigh, guacamole gamer fart, titty milk. <laughs> it does not taste like titty milk. I am severely concerned for Santi's mental health in this role. But for all the borderline branding, how much is hype and how much is actually performance? Do these drinks really do what they're advertising themselves as doing? Do they really help gamers get good? Today we bust out our science hats, look under the hood, and find out which of these will reign supreme as the leadest of Haxors. Now if you're like me going into this episode, you probably assume that there's no major difference between your average can of Red Bull and G Fuel. But that's not actually the case. Sure, most gamer drinks these days do have plenty of caffeine, borderline illegal amounts of it, as well as a bunch of vitamins, but they typically all have some sort of additional ingredients ranging from more amino acids and electrolytes to herbal extracts. All of these things are usually lumped together under the label of dietary ingredients on the can. That's right, these aren't just energy drinks anymore, they're dietary supplements. Sounds like it should make them healthy, right? Well, not really. According to the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, all a drink or food needs to have is some vitamin, mineral, or herb thrown in and listed on the nutrition facts to qualify as a dietary supplement. In other words, the bar is set pretty darn low. Gin, you know, the alcohol? Well, that could very well be labeled as a dietary supplement too, considering it's made with a bunch of botanicals. But that doesn't suddenly make it part of a balanced breakfast. What's worse, the FDA doesn't regulate these ingredients like they do with drugs, so the efficacy of the dietary supplements isn't something that's given a stamp of approval. The reason I'm pointing all this out is that people tend to get fooled by all the sciencey names, automatically assuming that it means there's extra goodness jammed into the can, but that's just not true. Plenty of these brands seem to 
just throw different things at the wall hoping that something sticks. Making things worse, even if an ingredient could be beneficial in some way, oftentimes the amounts are just wildly different from brand to brand, sometimes staying so low that they're still practically useless. So as we go through the tests today, it's important to take some of this data with a grain of salt, since hard information on some of the effectiveness levels of these things just doesn't exist yet. But putting how effective they are or aren't aside, we're gonna judge them by whether enough of the ingredients in question have been added into the formulation. Now, a few weeks ago on GT Live, we took our list of 16 of the most popular gamer-focused energy drinks, and we judged them purely based on their taste. And uh, let's just say it was a wild and largely unpleasant ride. Have you ever wondered what artificial flavors taste like? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh, regret. Oh, this is kind of like a stale bubble gum that I really have to work to get the flavor out of. Maybe I unwrap a cool comic out of it with Bazooka Joe doing something mildly amusing. But then you chew it like five times and the flavor goes away and you're left with like a, a very chemically, ugh, this is what they like flavor. This is that. Yeah, this is the Bazooka Joe bubblegum flavor of gamer powdered beverage. But by the end, we managed to narrow the field down from 16 to 10. The group we ended up with was a collection of Mountain Dews, the OG Mountain Dew Soda, as well as their Strawberry Melon and Baja Blast flavored energy drinks, three G Fuels, two powdered, blue raspberry and cherry, and one canned snow cone, Ultimate Edition Coke and Coke Zero, and then a few outlier contenders like Rogue Tropical Breeze and Sneak Grape. G Fuel explicitly markets itself as the best gaming and esports energy drink, so obviously we wanted to give that one a test. Ultimate Edition Coke was a special flavor made in conjunction with Riot Games, the studio behind League of Legends, and was therefore meant to taste like gaining experience points, which, judging from the flavor, meant that leveling up tastes like bananas? I love that all of us, you didn't see Ash off screen, but you did it, I did it, we all had the like, <laughs> curious head cock all at the exact same time, every single one of us, like, what? It's that. Sneak energy drinks like to lean heavily into gaming through social media posts, like what can you say in COD that would also make sense on a date, or the nine best games in history according to chat GPT. Finally, Mountain Dew's connection to gaming goes back eons. Thanks to its higher caffeine content than most sodas, Mountain Dew became the go-to choice for gamers trying to pull all-nighters in the early days. And I do mean the early, early days. In a Window DOS developer log from 1994, I found a reference to the ancient connection between programmers and Mountain Dew. Quote, Fortunately, Windows handles this error gracefully, figuring that the programmer is simply overdosing on Mountain Dew and ignoring requests for non-existent modules. So as we start picking them apart, what do all these energy drinks have in common? Well, caffeine, obviously. And while we're all familiar with caffeine, most people have a fundamental misunderstanding of how it actually works in our body. See, our brains are full of things called adenosine receptors. These receptors act to alert your brain that it's time for rest, regulating and slowing the electric pulses that are going to your heart. What caffeine does does is block those receptors. By blocking the receptors, your brain suddenly feels more awake because it's lacking the signals that are actively telling it to go to sleep. In other words, caffeine isn't working because it's giving us a boost, it's working because it's preventing us from feeling tired. Kind of like a zombie. They're not alive, they're just not capable of feeling dead. But here's the rub to all this. While caffeine blocks the adenosine receptors temporarily, it doesn't stop the adenosine production. Once that caffeine wears off, the receptors get flooded with all that adenosine buildup, causing the post-energy drink crash. Of course, you can always keep your caffeine intake going to keep blocking the receptors, but like with any drug, your body is going to slowly build up a tolerance, and that tolerance might create some issues. You see, in addition to blocking adenosine receptors, caffeine also causes your arteries to contract. This in turn forces the heart to push itself harder to get blood throughout the body. Now, under normal circumstances, that isn't that much of an issue. Caffeine is short-lived, and the amount of it in a typical can of soda or cup of coffee isn't really pushing into any sort of dangerous territory. However, as caffeine doses get larger and more prolonged, your arteries start to contract even more, causing your heart to work even harder. This is where the jitters come in. Sure, at small doses, caffeine might help you improve your fine motor skills, but at large doses, it's gonna push your heart too far and cause your fine motor skills to deteriorate. Not only is that a potential health issue, it's also a potential gamer issue. If the only difference between victory and defeat is a few millimeters on a controller, too much caffeine is gonna be a major detriment. Also, you know the headaches that you get when you go a bit too long without your morning coffee? Well, when I say that caffeine restricts your blood vessels, I mean all your blood vessels, including the ones that are up in your brain. This causes your body to pump more blood into your head so that you, you know, don't die. But when you suddenly cut off the caffeine levels and your blood vessels expand again, your body doesn't get that memo right away. And so it continues to force all the extra blood up there, which sets off all sorts of alarms to the nerves in your brain, making you feel like your head's about to pop like a zit. But caffeine isn't the only chemical shared across most of these gamer drinks. There's also 
taurine. Taurine is a naturally produced amino acid that the body uses for energy production. So it's thought that adding more taurine to your system might actually increase your overall energy levels. Early tests with mice have supported this, showing that taurine combined with caffeine helps combat sleep deprivation more than just caffeine alone. How much that actually works for humans is still up for debate, but overall the working philosophy is that caffeine helps stave off your natural exhaustion, while taurine helps your body create new energy. So at this point, how are our candidates looking? We want some caffeine, but hopefully a low enough dose to avoid the shakes. We also want taurine in there to help generate some long-term energy. So let's just start off with the obvious loser, OG Mountain Dew. Sure, Mountain Dew has been associated with gamers forever, and it technically won our taste test, mostly because of the 46 grams of sugar pumped into those 12 ounces of liquid. But overall, Mountain Dew doesn't do a whole lot in terms of energy beyond the 54 milligrams of caffeine in there. Oh, and while we're at it, might save this one for an episode down the line, but sugar? Yeah, that actually doesn't give you energy. At least not the energy that you're thinking of, bouncing off the walls and making you all hyperactive. That's a myth that's been debunked dozens of times over. In fact, if anything, sugar just makes you crash harder at the other end without getting you any sort of boost to compensate. In general, all the sugar in the Mountain Dew might actually help you lose focus and alertness, which is the exact opposite of what we want out of our ideal gamer drink. Ultimate Coke and Coke Zero, you weird banana flavored sodas, they also fall into the same camp, and so we're also eliminating them right now from the race. So how then do we differentiate the rest of the pack? Well, the key difference between an energy drink and a gamer energy drink are the vitamin complexes and amino acids that are mixed into the formula. Usually you'll find that gamer drinks are jammed with ingredients said to boost memory and brain function, specifically the B vitamins and L tyrosine. That one is an amino acid that can improve memory, thinking skills, and overall mental performance under stressful conditions. Exactly what you need when you're trying to make it through a game with Ash silently judging you just off camera. I see your eyes on me, Ash. I feel your icy stare. It will not phase me. The other component that a lot of these brands try to work in is choline. Now, choline is very similar in function to the B vitamins, but it has an additional use for your body, which is to create acetylcholine. We covered this recently on our macadamia nut episode, but essentially acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that plays an important role in, you guessed it, brain functions like learning and memory. But that's not all. Acetylcholine also plays a major part in voluntary muscle movements like clicking a mouse and clacking a keyboard. So going back to our gamer drinks, this helps us cull the field even more, with the Mountain Dew drinks falling short yet again. Based on their ingredients list, sure, they contain plenty of parts from that B vitamin complex, but they're completely devoid of any additional amino acids or extracts that could help with alertness. Overall, they're not actually adding more energy to your system, they're just relying on caffeine to give you a short-term energy booster without any sort of good long-term stabilizers. So, just like that, the field's been narrowed from 10 to 5. Let's take a look at our remaining contestants. Rogue Energy has itself a surprising mix, which has 175 milligrams of caffeine. You'd expect it to be loaded with sugars like Mountain Dew, but it has surprisingly only one tiny gram of sugar, meaning that it's not going to give you a whole lot of sugar crash. Rogue also made sure to load you up on vitamin B12. The recommended daily allowance of B12 is only in the 2 to 3 microgram range. Rogue Energy over here is containing a bone-shattering 400 micrograms. And I do mean that whole bone-shattering thing literally. Doses higher than 25 micrograms per day are said to increase the risk of bone fractures according to studies. Maybe it's just because all that energy has you literally bouncing off the walls. Rogue Energy also contains glycine, an amino acid that improves cognitive function and reduces fatigue. There's also L-tyrosine like we talked about before in there. Overall, everything in Rogue is looking pretty good. I'd say it's almost looking too good. You see, everything in here feels uncomfortably targeted, not for boosting memory or cognitive performance, but rather for boosting your overall dopamine levels. Dopamine, as most of you know at this point, is known as the happy hormone because of the role it plays in the reward system of our brains. Whenever you do something good, dopamine is released by your brain to make you feel good and want to do that action again. Junk foods and sugar, they make our brains flood with dopamine, which is why we tend to get addicted to those things. I mean, don't get me wrong, dopamine has other functions that pertain to memory too, but with how much dopamine triggers rogue energy is shoved into this drink, it almost seems like it's more of a tool to get you addicted to the drink rather than a tool that's helping to boost your KD ratio. Honestly, I'm starting to get a bit worried here. We're running through the finalists and nothing's really rising to the top. G Fuel claims to be the best for gamers, so maybe there's something there? Well, right off the bat, you can see that G Fuel is leaning heavy on the caffeine angle. Heavy, heavy. A massive 300 milligrams of caffeine per 16 ounce can. That right there, that is more than four times as caffeinated as Mountain Dew. However, G Fuel also backs up the other side with a slew of vitamins like B12, and amino acids that not only break down fats into energy, but also help generate more proteins like L-tyrosine, which helps create neurotransmitters. That right there is a bonus, because those neurotransmitters are really going to be helping you a lot when you're gaming and need to make
make a bunch of split second decisions. Overall though, that's about as far as the gamer half of the drink goes. G Fuel will give you a heck of a lot of energy. That is very true, don't get me wrong. But the focus element of it is overall lacking, or at the very least it doesn't really set itself apart from the rest of the pack. Speaking of packs, Sneak doesn't really offer anything different than G Fuel. But let me tell you, some of those flavors were a big ol' swing and a miss. Do you like stale bubblegum from like the 1920s? <laughs> Have I got a gamer drink for you? The grape flavor? Yeah, I've got this super squeaky high pitch out of me in a good way. Oh yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. But overall, it doesn't really offer that much to run away with first place either. So what does? I mean, we've kind of run down the entire list of finalists from the taste test without any sort of clear cut winner. And honestly, that's because when we ran the numbers, the drink that best serves gamers for their energy drink wasn't one of the flavor finalists. That's right, we've got ourselves a last minute dark horse entering the competition. Victory, thy name is Thick Lemonade. It's like Thick Lemonade. <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is a weird <laughs> phrase to use. Thick Lemonade. But that is what I just put in my mouth. Nerd Focus, one of the contestants to not make it into the finals in terms of flavor, gives you everything the other brands do, but then takes it to the next level. You get it? A little gamer talk there. Oh, I'm so funny, wow. Caffeine? Well, Nerd Focus actually contains two different kinds, which can help with retaining your alertness and counteracting crashes. Plus, it has a large amount of ginseng extract, a plant that can help with energy and keep your cholesterol, inflammation, and blood sugar in check. And with gamer rage being a very real thing, boy oh boy is that necessary. Necessary. And that's before we even get into the focus components. It has the usual suspects of vitamins, but where it truly excels is providing choline to the body. Like I mentioned earlier in the episode, acetylcholine is vital in memory and learning, but what I didn't mention yet is that it also actively supports your motivation and attention span, which, as far as gaming goes, might as well be the most important thing beside the energy kick. Factor in the boost that it gives to your voluntary muscle movements, and you suddenly have the most important ingredient for attention that every other brand just didn't give enough attention to. Too. Not only is Nerd Focus hitting you with the heart pumping caffeine injection, and believe me, it is with 160 milligrams of caffeine in a can, but it's also making sure that you're not suddenly getting distracted so you can keep on punishing those noobs. It may not have been the best to drink. The brand of Nerd Energy is far from flattering. Honestly, I'd rather drink anime girl thigh just for the irony, and the commercial ain't doing itself any favors either. But if we're judging it by its intended function, Nerd Focus is the clear winner, despite what our initial reactions may have been. This, this one's smarter than energy. Not smarter than flavor. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bottoms up, gamers. And hey, if you're looking for general energy drink recommendations, that video is over to the left. Like I said, Red Bull, it is a bloodbath for them. But you might be surprised by who ultimately wins. And as always, my friends, make sure you hit subscribe before you leave. That way you're notified of more of our scientifically based food recommendations. As always, I'll see you next week.